Well, hello, viewing audience. This is The Life, and we are located in Redford, Michigan. I am Bishop Harold Duncan, and we are delighted that you've decided to tune in. Here at The Life, we believe in the total uh, unerring Word of God. So get ready for an amazing Word. Sit back, relax, whatever you may be doing, and enjoy the Word. And we'll be back shortly after the conclusion of the Word. Let's get to the Word of God today. Um, again, tell somebody your part is important. I want to tag back on one last week. Um, Pastor Alicia prompted something in, in me, and I have been dealing with it um, just kind of for some time now. Um, by nature, I'm a people person by nature. Um, I just love to interact with people. Um, thank God for my guys on the band. I'm sorry. Thank God for these my brothers I worship with every day. I mean, every week. Thank God for them. EJ, Tony, my brothers back there, um, Phil, um, Snoop had to leave. Um, I thank God for you guys. So come, let's celebrate our band again, guys. Amen. These guys are highly sought, all, sought, sought after all over the place. But we thank God they submit themselves to this house. Um, and so I want to go back. Um, Pastor Lisa prompted something last week when she said it's not time for us to be quiet. Anybody heard her say that? Amen. That we have to make some declarations and some, some decrees. Um, and by nature, I'm a people person. And I love just to, um, you know, I ain't going to say talk a lot, but I love to engage, right? I love to engage. But I've had moments when I couldn't find words. And whether that was through frustration, whether that was through anxiety, stress, um, cares of the world. Anybody ever been in that space where you just said, you know what, I just I can't, there's nothing I can say. You know, I've, I've had those emotions and so when she prompted that last week I said, wow it's not a time in this season to be quiet and be silent and even if the enemy is trying to silent you, silence you, even much more, the time you need to really push out even more and, and we know it's a fight. Tell somebody it's a fight. It's not easy. It's not easy. And so if I had to title this, and I'm not big on titles when it comes to this. When worship and prayer collide. Tell somebody. What happens when worship and what happens when prayer collide? The Lord kind of gave me something called the collision, and we're going to be talking about that and doing something when we talk about harp and bow in those moments. How many worshipers do I have in this building today? You just love to worship God. Amen. Come on, let me see the hands of the worshipers, God. How many people love to pray? Well, let me just say love. How many people pray? <laughs> just love to pray. How many of you guys pray every day? Okay, put your hand down. How many of you guys worship every day? And we're going to talk about what that looks like, right? Um, it's, it, because we have a misconception as to what that looks like. What is worship? I want to give you this. Worship is the awed response to the saving acts and praiseworthy character of God. Wow. Let me say that again, just in case you're taking notes. Worship is the awed response. So I'm standing in awe to the saving act and praiseworthy character of God. Now, I found this other definition that I want to add this in. This comes out of the Easton's Bible Dictionary. It adds another element for us. And I don't want you to be bored by this because this is necessary. Um, homage rendered to God, and then it has a comma. Then it says this, which it is sinful idolatry to render to any other created being. Wow. Wow. And what that tells me is that God Almighty is the only one worthy of our worship. As much as I love my wife for 31 years and we've been together for 32, 33 years, she cannot take the place of Almighty God. As much as I love my children, they cannot take the place of the almighty God. My worship does not belong to them, but it belongs to God the Father. Tell somebody your worship belongs to God the Father. I want to read this over in Exodus 34. You don't have to put this up. Let me just read it real quick. 
This is out to Amplified. For you shall not worship any other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous and passionate God demanding what is rightfully and uniquely his. Tell somebody he's demanding it. Now let me ask this question. Anybody ever worship something else? Now let me tell you, just in case, you know, I don't worship no other God yet. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I know I have. I've held on to that money just a little too long. Okay? I am an avid. Take my glasses off when I say this. I'm pretty good at this too, actually. I'm, matter of fact, I'm like really good at this. Okay? That's not even a good enough word to describe it. I'm like the guy at this. I love pickleball. I'm an avid pickleball player. Avid. Anybody ever heard of pickleball? Okay, anybody? Let me see your hands. Okay, we're going to go play one day and see how good you guys really are. Uh, so I'm an avid pickleball and racquetball player. I used to be a, a, a basketball player. Me and Will the Thrill. That's Will's name. Um, Will the Thrill. Man, that guy used to come. Oh, my God. He was a monster. Um, Phil was pretty good. My, my God, my, my son back here went to prep. You know, they never did beat us. Um, you know, never did beat us. Um, 2007 all the way through 2012 they never won um, but sometimes I find myself I'm just gonna have some fun today putting pickleball in front of God so now let me ask this question how many of you guys have ever put anything in front of God When God is calling you, you say, you know what, well, God, you know, I'll get with you in a minute. Let me do this first, and then I'll come back to you later. Anybody ever been in that space? I know I have. I've been there plenty of times. Worshiping other gods when God is calling you. And sometimes we don't see it like that. But when God is calling you and we decide that we want to do something different or do something else in place of him, until we're in a place when we really, really need him. And then we'll shut everything down. And we've seen it back in, in, in September 9-11. We, we, we saw that when the world and the nation, because of what transpired, found ourselves in a space where we really needed God. And we, I mean, everybody was praying everywhere. Y'all saw that all on TV. They was praying. When you go to the airport, people were praying. They were praying. I mean, we were praying all the time. Wow. What is prayer? Simple three words. Communication with God. We ain't got to make it deep. What is prayer? Tell somebody it's communicating with God. Now, you can't do all the talking. <laughs> Tell somebody, I can't do all the talking. We got to shut our mouth sometime and just listen to what God is saying to us. And that's the challenging part about it. We want to talk to God. God, I need. God, I want. God, God, God. And God is sitting back trying to say, hey, you know what, Howard? I'm going to talk about me. Hey, man, just shut up and listen to what I'm saying. That's what he said to me. Now, I can't say I said to you. Just be quiet. Close your mouth and listen to what I'm saying because I'm trying to tell you something. Now, now, now here it is. Let me put my glasses on. See this. Oftentimes, God will speak through individuals. And we tune those individuals out. And we get into the test. We're going to be out here as another Lions play at 1 o'clock. So, uh, hey man, I'm going to talk to God today a little bit about them in Tampa. Um, but oftentimes, God will speak through individuals. And if we're not careful, we'll look at that individual just as another person. And we'll miss what God is saying to us. Anybody ever had that happen? I know I have. That God has come to me through someone and said, hey, don't do this. And I just said, oh, that's just a net. Uh, she never did really, you know. Or, oh, that's just a deer, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. And God is really saying something and we miss God. How about this? All the time when Bishop is up here, God is speaking to us through him. 
to really get us to a space where we need to be. Because oftentimes, slap, most of the times, God's going to speak through fee. Or God's going to speak through Tracy. Hey, hey, check this out. How about this? God will even speak through your children. And we just reduce that. But wait, go to your room. We reduce it. But it's communicating with God and not just you talking, but mostly you listening to what he's saying through his word. When you call me, this is over in Jeremiah 29, 12, and 14. 12 through 14. When you call me, when you come and pray to me, say this, I'll listen. That's what God is saying. When you come looking for me, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. Can I read that again off the message? When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. When you come looking for me, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and wanting it more than anything else, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. God's decree. I'll turn things around for you. I'll bring you back from all the countries which I sent you off into exile. You can count on it. So tell somebody, God will hear you when you call on them. So listen, right quick, somebody just call on them right here. Come on, just for a second. I told you, you got to be a part of this. You got to be a part. Somebody just call on them right now in this space. Somebody just call on me, Lord, I need you, Lord, I desire you. What happens when prayer and worship come together? What happens when they collide? Number one, God will always hear you. When prayer meets with worship, God will always hear you. Let's go to 2 Chronicles. Put this up for me, please. We're almost done. We're not going to be long. 2 Chronicles 7, 13, 6. Anybody get anything out of this? I can just be me, right? That's all I can be. Can't be nobody else. If I shut up heaven, now let me, let me give you a little backdrop. Most of the time when people read this scripture, they think they're talking to the heathen. That's not who God is talking to. He's really talking to the church, the people of God. So let me read this text. If I shut up heavens so that no rain falls, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence and plague among my people, and my people who are called by my name. Tell yourself, tell somebody I've been called by his name. Here's the qualifiers. You call by his name, you humble themselves and pray. Crave, require as a necessity. Tell somebody, seeking God is a necessity. We got to see that seeking God is a, tell somebody, seeking God is worth more than you breathing. It's a necessity. We need air to breathe. I dare anybody to try to hold their breath for a long period of time and watch what happens. When I learned to be a, a lifeguard, we had to go under, and I was up at U of M when we did this, and we had to go under, and had, you had to hold your breath for so long, and man, that was the hardest thing in the world. I know we got some soldiers in here, and, and, and sometimes you go through different things where you have to do that, but try holding your breath for a long period of time and watch what happens. Because breathing in air is a necessity. What well, the scripture says here in this text, who I call by name, humble themselves, pray and seek my face. Here it is, crave, require as a necessity my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. Forgive their sins and heal 
their lands. So number one, God will always hear us when prayer and, and worship collide. Tell somebody when prayer and worship collide, God will hear you. Number two, we see in this text, God will forgive us when prayer and worship collides. Isn't that amazing? That's God. No matter what you do, what we do, when prayer and worship collide, God will forgive us. It's in the text. Here it is. Number three, God will bring healing to us in our homes, on our job. Anybody need healing in this space right now? Anybody say, I need healing in this space? I did tell somebody. In that, so listen, real quick. Somebody just put their hands, lay their hands on that person next to them. Tammy, lay hands on my sister right here next to you. We just going to pray for her quick. I just, yep. I said we're going to believe God, right? And I said you're interactive, interactive. This interactive. This is interactive. Don't get bored. Father, we thank you that healing belongs right now because we seek you right now in this space. We seek you for our sisters and for our brothers, God. We come together with you, God, because you're great. And you said that, God, if we come seeking you, that healing, you will bring healing to our nation. You will bring healing to us. You will bring healing, God, to your people right now, God. So we believe and we stand in your word right now that our brother and our sister, they're healed. Come on, take about 30 seconds right now. Pray with that person next to you. Pray with that person right there in that space. Pray with them. So good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. So good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend. Now just lift your hands and worship. Come on. So good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend. Come on, when worship and prayer collide, come on. So turn those mics on, Brandon. I need the mics on. Turn them on. Come on. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been So good to me God, I can't believe how you love me What a friend you Come on, just worship for me, come on So good to me How you So good to me, God, I can't believe how you love me, what a friend. Come on, one more time, come on. So good to me, God, I can't believe how you Hallelujah. You see what happens when prayer and worship come together. Thank you, Jesus. Stay right there, EJ. Acts 16, 25 and through 27. We talked about this last week. But at midnight... When Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praises to God, and the prisoners were listening, tell somebody somebody was listening, listening to them, suddenly, somebody say suddenly, 
there was a great earthquake so powerful that the very foundations of the prison were shaken all at once and the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened and we know the rest of the story what else happens when prayer dawn and worship collide the collision of prayer and worship midnight suggest there's several suggestions but I've had some midnight moments when things seemed to be so dark that there wasn't an escape out of it I want to put this point out there That there's some battles that you can't be by yourself. And the enemy's design is to separate you. To kind of have you out there on the island. That's what the Bible says, and at midnight, it says Paul and Silas. One can chase a thousand. But two can put t um, 10,000 to flight. And just imagine how many people in this room right now, what we can do. I also got to point this out. Because I said midnight suggests in my midnight times of darkness, fear, stress, Anxiety. This is mine, right? And I say for what you. And it, 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 in this text, it says that Paul and Silas were not just thrown in jail, but they were thrown into the innermost part, the darkest place you can be. And not only were they thrown in that space, there was a picture that I saw that their legs and feet were in stocks locked up where you can't even move hands were bound and shaken chained they couldn't even move and there are moments in our life when we may not be in a physical space like that <laughs> but fee in our mind we're locked. We're in. We're in that innermost part, Unk. We're in that innermost part, locked in. And we're alone and we're by ourselves, Elder. Because the enemy is separated. I got I to gotta move, but let me share this. When worship and prayer collide, I've been doing this worship, and I want to say this, for a very long time. I've been blessed to worship with some of the biggest named people, not that that makes a difference, on some of the biggest stages and thousands of people. I've been blessed to write some songs for some of the greatest people. And I've shared this testimony, um, and most of you guys who, who know my wife and I know this, and for those of you guys who don't, you'll learn today. When we talk about bondage, and locked in and shutting down and separation and in the need Belinda for prayer and worship to collide so freedom can be set free so I can be set free when we lost our son in Daniel and those of you guys who don't know there was a son that we had that would have been a year older than Gabe and I'll never forget we went through that whole space and time and we believed God for some things and you know God's will was something different for our life I say amen praise God thank God but then as I began to sit on the keyboard it was a different church at the time and I would begin to sit on the piano I grew angry anybody ever been in that space I grew mad I was at the mount. I didn't even want to play no more. 
I didn't want to worship anymore because I felt like God had let me down. I didn't want to hear what anybody had to say. I was sitting in church because I was obligated to sit there. I was obligated to play. I was obligated to lead worship. That was my obligation. But inside, I was locked and bound. I just got to be transparent. Come on. In my own mind, I was separated from everybody. The enemy had separated me even from my wife. And we wasn't physically separated, but I didn't want to hear nothing nobody had to say. And here, here's the reason why. Because I said, God, I have sang and written songs for everybody in this world, and you couldn't do this for me? <laughs> I thought I was your boy. I have led worship, I have cried, I have worshiped, I have prayed, God, and you telling me, God, you couldn't do this for me? One day turned into two, two days turned into a week, a week turned into two weeks, two weeks turned into a month. And I would walk past my keyboards and stuff at home, wouldn't even touch them. They started to collect dust. Didn't want to play anymore. Then I found myself in a space. Well, I got with some people who knew how to pray and who knew how to worship. And the more they prayed and the more they worshiped, the more they prayed, the more they worshiped. Then it turned into the more we prayed. And the more we worship, I begin to see freedom and I begin to see chains falling off me. And what I felt was the darkest place in my life. I couldn't do it by myself. What it took. You deserve praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve praise. Worthy is your name. Come on. Worthy is your name. When prayer and worship collide. Jesus, you deserve the praise. So listen, stay there, EJ. When worship meets prayer, when the two intersect and come together, great things happen. And when you find yourself in a space When things are not working the way you thought they should work. When prayer meets intercession. That's why it's so imperative that we get here and we're here at 930. Because it's imperative that prayer meets intercession. I still got prayers on the wall back there. I'm still believing God to answer. But I'm that much stronger when I'm with my brothers and my sisters. And when we come together and we begin to raise our hands and our voices together, I leave out of here that much stronger. There are oftentimes, I'm going to be transparent, I can guarantee you that people walk in this place and they could be on the, at the very brink of just giving up. But when you walk in and prayer and intercession meet and worship comes in, it changes the outlook, gives you a different thought. And the key thing is to sing it to the Father. You can't sing it 
the woe is me. We not having no pity parties. They did this. So what? Get over it. And let's exalt the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. When prayer meets worship, great things happen. So one more time. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise. Come on, just with your hands extended. Come on. Come on. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise. Worthy is your name. One more time. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve praise. Worthy so listen, when a prayer and intercession collide, number one, some other things, it shines the light on Christ in dark places. And we see that in the text because it says when Paul and Sazunina and it goes through and it goes through, people listen, it shines the light on Christ in a dark place and how many of you guys understand that light and darkness can never share space so when you want to bring light to something allow worship and prayer to meet in that dark space because the enemy wants to keep it dark but God is light and so when you worship and you pray it brings light. It shines Christ's light in dark places. Number two, when worship and prayer collide, people that you least suspect will stop and give attention to what you are doing. We see that in the text. You see that Paul and Silas sang, and then the text says, and the prisoners begin to what? Listen. Tell somebody, somebody's always listening. And so, you want to change things at your house, just begin to sing and begin to pray. Anybody need some changes someplace? You want to change things at your job, begin to sing and pray. I didn't say you had to have a quality voice. That's not the requirement. Tell somebody, that ain't the requirement. That ain't required. Not in this setting. In that setting, that's not required. If you begin to sing and begin to worship God and begin to pray, people are listening. How many parents do we have in here? Begin to worship and pray with your children. And watch things shift. When Gabe, where is he? He's up there. And a few years ago, you know, and, and, and this is nothing new to the church. My son, my youngest son was going through, and let's say, man, for my oldest son is here, Caleb, a phenomenal worship leader in his own right. I'm so, wow. Um, but Gabe was going through suicide thoughts. It had gotten really, really bad, and we believed God, and we, and we would just begin to sing and worship and pray until God did something. And God, the more we sang and worshiped, we watched the hand of God deliver him from that. And we set our affections, Elder Robert, we set our affections on God. Number three, tell somebody, expect a suddenly. Anybody need a suddenly? Tomorrow, I can't wait till tomorrow, God. I need, I need something to happen right here. And, and the scripture says this. 
Suddenly there was a great earthquake. Tell somebody there's an earthquake coming. Now, we're not looking at that from a, from, from a negative perspective. We're looking at it from a perspective that the grounds are going to be shaking. The peop- you and everybody you know around you are going to be free. Tell somebody it's going to be a suddenly moment. Because when prayer meets worship, there's a suddenly that happens. Tell somebody suddenly. Tell somebody suddenly. Tell somebody suddenly. Expect it. Now, now I've been reading this text for a long time, and I never saw this. I'm going to go back if I can. Oh, yeah, here it is. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so powerful that the very foundation of the prisons were shaken. And at once all. When prayer meets worship, expect some things to happen all at once. As many times, slap as I've read that, I said, wow, God brought that out. Everything's not going to happen piece by piece. There's going to be some things that when you pray and worship, it's going to happen all at one time. Anybody need a one-time blessing? Something to happen immediately right now all together. I I can't take it in pieces. I need to happen all right now. There's going to be some things that when prayer and worship collides, it's going to be some things that's going to happen all at once. You ain't got to get it piece by piece. A little bit here and a little bit there. No, it's coming all at once. It's all at once. Can you imagine? You putting together a dresser, you need it up tomorrow, we need it up next week, and today you get a leg, next week you get the other leg, following week you get screws. No, I need it all at once. I want it all right now. But God says when prayer and worship collide, when you submit yourself to the process, there's going to be some things in your life That's going to happen all at one time. Number five, understand that other people's freedom and deliverance can be tied to your prayer and worship. So tell somebody, it's not just for me, but it's for you too. Come on, tell us on the other side, it's not just for me, but it's for you too. The text says that Paul and Silas begin to sing, Auntie, and the prisoners were listening. And the great thing is suddenly there was an earthquake and we go on, on, and on, and on, and on. But then it says not only was Paul and Silas set free, but everybody in the prison was set free. Because two men decided to obey God. So tell somebody, my obedience will cause your freedom. My God. (laughs) That's why it's so imperative to obey and listen to what God is saying because somebody's destiny is tied to it. My kid's destiny is tied to what I'm doing. My wife's destiny is tied. Husbands, your wife's destiny is tied to what you're doing. Mothers, fathers, your kids, your children, their destiny is tied to what you're doing. So tell somebody, this one ain't just for me, it's for you. So listen, we got to get busy run quick. Booby, give me some symbols, grab somebody by the hand, and we're going to raise a shout and tell somebody, it's not just for me, but this shout is for you. This trial is for you. Come on, raise it up. You ain't got to have no prompt. It's not just for me, but doing is for you. He found this for you, gave this for you. 
It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. We ain't got to get no prompt. It ain't based on how you feel. Paul and Silas were in the innermost parts, the darkest place. And if you honest, the text don't say it, but I'm sure they didn't feel like doing it. But they were compelled to lift up the almighty God because it was bigger than just them. Tell them, tell them, this next praise, this next song is for you, is for you, is for you. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go find you somebody else and tell them, it's for you. in that same space stay there keep standing you can also expect number six tell somebody expect salvation to take place because when the prisoners heard shackles were free it said that the very one that was assigned to watch over them in other words he gave his life to Christ When prayer and worship collide, tell somebody, I'm expecting salvation. Anybody believe in God for some people to still be saved? I still got some folk on my list, some family members that I'm still believing God for. Marijuana ain't too hard. Alcohol ain't too hard. It don't matter. None of that matters. Is there anything too hard for God? No. The Bible says the one that was assigned to watch them. Slap, he gave his life to Christ. After hearing Paul and Silas sing and pray, and they had an opportunity to minister the word of God to him. And it's not just him, <laughs> but it says that his household was saved. So tell them, but God is saving. So number six, tell them, I'm expecting salvation when I pray and when I worship. We got to move. I'm not going to get to all these things. Let me just give them to you in two minutes. You can sit down if you can. You don't have to. It's up to you. It's just how I love to do. Amen. When prayer and worship collides, 
Let me give you these real quick. It reminds us of the goodness of God. You can find out over in Psalms 34, 8 and 9. Open your mouth and taste. And I'm reading this at the message. I love this. Open up your mouth and taste. Open your eyes and see how good God is. Blessed are you who run to him. Worship God if you want the best. Listen to this. Worship opens doors to all his goodness. Tell somebody, it reminds of his goodness when you worship. Number two, it brings peace. Anybody ever needed peace? When worship and prayer collide, it brings peace. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6, and 7, I'm going to read this out to Amplify. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but everything in every circumstance or situation by prayer and the petition with thanksgiving to continue to make your specific requests known to God and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace stands, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. So it brings peace. Now, here's something I found interesting as we wrap up. I just want to get to this last part. The great thing about worship and prayer to God, the Bible says that when we do that, God begins to sing over us. Can you imagine God singing over you? Come on, just, 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 just sit back and just see how that feels. To have God himself singing over you. Wow. When we were raising our children, and how many parents used to sing, you know, you, you, you used to sung to your children? Just sung. It, again, it didn't even matter how you even sounded. Listen, I remember coming up, I would push play on an old school tape recorder and just put it up to my wife's stomach and just let it play. You know, how many of y'all ever did that? I know I ain't the only one. Just, and just push play and just let it play and have worship music going on all through the night and stuff. Can you imagine God himself singing over his children? Wow. Just imagine when you worship and pray how good that is to have God himself singing over you. A couple more than we're going to be done. I have to believe anything and if you're transparent like I was and you ever find your space and we've heard Bishop say this of everything we've said and you ever find yourself in a place where I just can't seem to find what God is anybody ever been in that space I know I have like man Lord where are you I like what Bishop says if you feel like you can't find him just worship. He'll find you. <laughs> I like that. It's like having the child. And I've never understood this because I'm not a mother. But it can be a 25 babies crying all at once. But something about that mama that know the sound of their child. I've never understood that. Like, man, you know, who, who is it? How, you, how you know that? All them folk back there, you, you that, that's Caleb. What? How you know? There's 30 people back there. Because I know. And guess what? Yep, she right. Can you imagine God himself? As we close, if you can't find him, just begin to worship and pray. And out of all the people in this room, God will say, I hear Tammy. Wow. God will say, I hear Fee. 
God even hears the person way in the back and say, man, that's Will singing to me. Wow, you know what? I hear Sister Deborah. Deborah's crying out to me right now. So if you find you can't find God, just begin to worship God. Let's take a moment. We're done. Hopefully this will bless some people tonight, today. Well, welcome back, everyone, to another presentation of the life. We've come to the conclusion, and so we hope and pray that it has enriched your life. Please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit us on our website, alccministry.com.